This is actually the Alpine Rose, a very beautiful, beautiful plant. But the only problem with this for me is that it doesn't like the frost. Or should I say the frost loves it. It's quite soft, I mean easy to pull out, so I won't need my forceps. I'm just going to... This is like picking gemstones from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed early this morning <laughs> went to bed at 5 o'clock but anywho was lying in bed quietly <laughs> noisily actually I snore and then all of a sudden I heard this bang 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 bang, bang. we have a tin roof and so Got out of bed, had a look on the window, and oh, it's hailing. <laughs> so I thought to myself, I should probably, uh, I need the forceps now to get into the nitty gritty of things inside there because I don't want to put my finger in there in case it's a baby plant, like that one there, and then I can easily knock it off. Anyway, so I thought to myself, I just done a few arrangements. Should I go run downstairs and put them all away? But I thought, well, it was only small, probably about that big. <laughs> so probably about uh, how many millimeters is that? 10 mil thick or one centimeter and I thought, nah, I put away some yesterday, but then the hail did not come, so I put it back again. But anyway, hang on, I got, I'm getting carried away here, look. Can you actually see what I'm doing? Yes. In here now, you see this weed? So it's weeding time. I, ha I can't attend to my garden because the rain. I can't be pulling weeds in the rain or dry leaves because... It's gonna make a mess but okay I broke off the weed but anyway the forceps gonna the roots of the weed hang on no finger that's a good trick there you go got it out and oops baby is in the bottom this is something else I lost the label but anyway oh there is white rose this one is white rose which goes pink. Oh, lots of babies. <gasps> See what I mean? Anyway, I was going to have a walk through around my garden and I just remembered now that the rain's not here yet. Look, clouds. I thought I might as well do the potting up of my pot at the front, but this caught my attention because my Potolaca oleracea variegata here, hang on, I'll just take this out. I have been growing it inside, inside my grow tent all through winter and it was nice and thick and then I take it out here and what happens? The hail hit it and lost a lot of the leaves down in the bottom but look, oh never mind, they will actually grow so the leaves hopefully I should gather them up and okay I'll put this one, there's forecast rain or more rain Oh, I'm sick of rain. It's just rain every day, just about. Uh, more forecast rain for us. And, well, actually, I should consider myself lucky because where we are, here in Canberra, Australia, we don't get floods, whereas a lot of people have been getting non-stop flood. They clean up and then it rains and floods again. Hang on. Just so many distractions. But anyway, I'm going to take you out at the front and look at these nice chubby ones. Oh my goodness. I really need to pot them up. So these ones, one of them was sold to me as white, not white dew. What did she say? It was Dong Ting. <laughs> and there you go. The label's already gone. But when it started growing, it's not Dong Ting. And... I suspect it's also white dew like this one. It kind of sort of looks different. That one is a little bit shorter. 
and this one is a little bit longer in its chubbiness but nevertheless equally as beautiful and look at all those jelly jamming or on the leaves i think it must be the weather or i don't know what's going on with these succulents anyway they're getting used to the cold and started to jam up but this plant here i just noticed this mia mi amor you are so beautiful but anyway let's go out in the front and pot i need to really pot up <laughs> distraction frosty bloom that's actually a prolific hybrid but anyway oh my goodness so many distractions love letter oh sending me little notes look at that <laughs> isn't that cute okay let's go at the front inspect first what's happening here i've got weeds growing in this pot and you can see put a lot of granite or actually i put my master succulent soil mix in this pot here but this if despite the rain we've been getting lots of rain but still this area or this pot still remains dry look at the soil it's very very dry but anyway i need to first empty this out i'm just gonna where's my Okay, making a mess. Hello, Mr. Worm, another worm here. Anyway, first thing I gotta do is remove all the rubbish over here, but the plants, they all gotta go, shake off the roots or the soil, but these are Victorella, and I've got some Sedevaria green rose, which, just gonna break that off break that off it's still good the rest we throw away the big Victoretta here beautiful plant but oh have to be planted in less soil oh this one's wet Are you there and more shichikuksi Now, and a big cluster of, look at that green rose. This actually works better without the camera. <laughs> but I just want to show you what I do, because I'm sure some of you would be very much interested in the process, instead of just the result. So, remove all of that while I can, because this is from the frost, or affected by the frost. They do get affected only like the bottom leaves, but I think it's more of being dry than uh, hammered by the frost. Okay, so anything, let's go, another propagation you can do. That one, by the way, okay, more babies growing. You see that one? I don't know. I hope I'm capturing this because I can't see. Now, this one now is flowering. Remove the flower. There you go. And then now, just chop that off. And if you want, you can remove a couple of the bottom leaves as well, but I wouldn't bother. But this one, you can just plant that now and make into a nice big plant one day. So now I'm just going to move, swap it, because now I'm doing the dirt and removing all the soil. Just careful, that's why I'm wearing gloves, just in case there's some nasty red back. The red back spider, but luckily none. Because normally the red back goes in the ground. They're actually poisonous, just for those who don't know, I'm not familiar with oh, another plant of the red back. Oh, ones like that, if you're really desperate, you can still grow that. But for me, it doesn't matter because this is Chichikuxi and I have so much of them, so that's fine. I'm just mainly removing all the roots because the succulents are not really fussy. Hang on, I got more plants in here. The soil has a lot of roots, but you can see that that is, this is my master succulent soil mix and I put a lot of the big pieces of the composed granite on top. So that's gonna get mixed into that. And since, okay. It's been dry and look at that, all really, really dry. Need to do a lot of cultivating 
just to remove all the roots. We don't want that. Now I finished cultivating the soil, so it's pretty loose, good enough. And what I like to do is get some more soil. This is just a tomato and vegetable growing mix. Garden basic, so pretty basic. And just tip this all up here. It's wet and I got, oh look, I got a mess. I made a mess, doesn't matter. We can just hold it down. Uh, now I think I just need to put a little bit at a time so I can stir it up. Stir it up, buttercup. But for the meantime, I'm taking this one inside and process this and I'm going to get a container and pick some plants to put into here. Cleaning up the shichikuksi, just removing the dry leaves at the back. And okay. just cutting that up. This is such a prolific grower that uh, I don't even worry with the small ones. Anyway, if you have, well, if it's sort of like that, I like to just break it because I still like to keep as long a stem as I can so I can insert it in the pot much better and it will hold. No need to pin it. So this one's as well. Just remove that. That's bent. So this one. This one's now. I need to break off because they grow quite easily as well. They're like a weed, but they're just so beautiful. The rosette shape. Now, if I plant this one in the ground, see like that one there, that will still grow. But I wouldn't bother because they are so easy to grow and get rid of the soil because we can't put soil in our bin as much as possible. Now, I got another one and another one and that's about it. I have now finished mixing up my soil and never mind, I'm just gonna have one glove <laughs> and I put half of the dirt onto this pot and now I'm gonna set it. Okay. Some dry leaves, I still like to remove it. Okay, we'll set you in here. Put some soil up the top. And we'll see. There you go. Okay, the idea is that for the euphobia that's going to be on top here to grow and they will just sprawl over like so. And that would be looking lovely well it will be hopefully when they do mature and anyway I am still a bit short of soil here but I'll just remove this euphobia flanaganii this one was grown in 2016 uh, with maybe 2017 sorry 2017 I think is when I acquire like one stem like this and the plant has grown. I got given three of them or three limbs. And hang on. Ah. Just shake it off. Okay. Oh, there's two plants in it. I don't want to damage the roots, but okay. If I do, it doesn't matter because they're very easy to grow. So I'm just going to tease it out a little bit to loosen the leaves because I don't want to cut it or scar it because the little white milky sap is actually quite dangerous if I get that into my eye. And there you go. Now, look, it's got a little baby. So I can actually put this in there now but I need some soil and also I need fertilizer I'm just using a standard fertilizer I'm not gonna show you the brand but any cheap fertilizer will do as long as it has equal amount of NPK or less nitrogen would be better okay up the top we go 
put you there. Not much. Succulents don't need that much fertilizing. I'll face the baby out in the front. I could remove it, but I'm not going to. So, and Euphobia actually loves water. So you don't let it sit in water, of course, or put in the soil with a lot of water, but they do like frequent watering or not, because if you don't water them, they just go red and also encourages cresting up. Well, a lot of chance anywhere of cresting. So anyway, that's it. Now I'm gonna have to put some plants, on I? Part of Violet Queen that I've been harvesting from. So I'm just gonna continue harvesting this. So this will have a new lease on life. So far, so good. So now I'm gonna work on the bottom. First, I'm getting this huge Orion with a lot of dry leaves. Hang on, I've got some more Violet Queen. I'll just stick them ones at the back here where you can't see anyway. Waste not, want not. Because they will just grow. Remove all. Dry leaves much easier. Yes, I just pulled off the roots. It doesn't matter. The meaner you treat them, the keener they grow. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Now we go in the center and I'm sort of going to put it on the side a little bit just so it can anchor off in here because. If I put it in the center, there's less room, it might just fall off. So that's the reason why I put it there. Just so it's got more space to sit on. Now with this one, instead of a bluebird, I decided now to put my lilac spoon that I've actually grown on the 26th of November. So it's like three years, 2019, from leaves. And there's also a sedum or something that's growing on the side there. Maybe a crassula, but... Also those weeds, it's just gorgeous. So they are frost hardy, as I find out now. And so I'm putting them out here as well. But I'm just taking the whole pot and all. And I will be facing it on the opposite side. I'm just shaking all the roots, loosening them up. And, okay, it is a crassula. I've got a whole heap of crassula. Leaves has fallen off, so we're gonna put you there, and you can grow in here along with the weeds. And I just lost a leaf again, and this will propagate. So I'll put that there, then I'll have another <laughs> or Graptivere topsy derby or a Chiviria lilac spoon. That is now let's go fill it up, buttercup. Now, that gorgeous, beautiful. You're gonna show off your prettiness over here. Actually, I'll put you in the back because I'm gonna, I wanna put something special in there. Also, I found some Letitia. Now, Letitia is not frost hardy, but I would like to try and see if it will grow here because this has been grown in a protected area in my backyard, but I'll put it on the opposite side here and I'll show you later on what it looks like anyway. Now I'm going to harvest some purple delights, especially the ones that are locking heads with some something else. Okay, I'll put that one. That one's good in the corner there. Okay, that one. Anything that's tall and sticking out will take off. And this one's going to grow over on this side. Might as well get that off. Okay.
Okay, so that's starting to look really, really good. Now I'm just gonna fill it up and see what it looks like in the end. So it's now finito. So I just have to clean up the wall, but I'm gonna let it all dry up so that way I can just brush it off. And of course, now let's go see what we've done. I've got some Sedivaria green rose, and also there's a Leticia there, and also a couple of secret plant, okay, <laughs> which is Graptoveria rosal, Chichicuxi, Purple Delight, and of course, the star of the show, Echeveria Orion, and Graptoveria topsy turvy, and also also known as Echeveria lilac spoon, and I've managed to put a Bernalensi in the corner there, so cute. So anyway, that's all I've got for you guys, and over on the other side, there's this colorful mini bell that uh, was screaming at me saying pull me out over on the other side on my way in and also some Graptoveria rosal. Oh, what's that one? Mendoza. Let's compare the two. The first one or the second one. So I don't know which one is better. So this side with a more mature Medusa's head or the other side Anyway guys, that's all I've got for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Now my garden is calling out to me saying, clean me. I need to pull out some weed and I need to bring in some stuff inside before it starts raining again. So it's weeding time.